We found close to a million coins. Right next to this mummy. According to legend, the most successful pirate of all time, Black Sam Bellamy, lost his ship, his life, and five tons of treasure in a freak storm. But a mummy pulled from its watery grave tells a different tale. A lot of the legend actually becomes reality. Mummies unwrapped. Off of the coast of Cape Cod, Massachusetts, deep beneath the frigid waters of the Atlantic, and surrounded by tons of pirate treasure, a mummy was found. The mummy was a part of a shipwreck from 1717. It was recovered encased in a concrete-like chunk of sediment, bearing the pistol belonging to the captain, Black Sam Bellin. Known as Black Sam because of his black ponytail, he was the wealthiest pirate in history. He attacked 53 ships and plundered 4.5 tons of treasure. In today's dollars, his haul would be worth over $120 million. But Black Sam allegedly met his demise when a violent storm near Cape Cod drove his ship, the Winter Galley, onto a sandbar just offshore. Many of the crew panicked, stuffing their pockets with coins and jumping overboard. Huge waves split the ship into pieces, scattering its treasure and washing ashore the many pirates who drowned. Black Sam was not among them. While some of the treasure was recovered, and at least two pirates swam to shore and survived, much about this incident remains a mystery. This is it? This is the mummy? It is. In all the years of work with mummies, never seen a mummy inside a rock. This is amazing. This is a very complex concretion. Most mummies are intentionally preserved by human hands, but this mummy formed by accident. Concretion happens when salt water clashes with rusty degrading iron, causing an electrical reaction. That mixture of rust, sand, and sea life form a hard shell around corroding iron artifacts like weapons and coins. And I see the pelvis coming out of here. What else of the body is inside this concrete? Yeah, we had it x-rayed with an industrial strength x-ray machine, but you can clearly see vertebra and ribs and, you know, a human skeleton inside. Has this mummy been identified? The bone was analyzed and was determined that the person was from North Africa, Eastern Europe. Hmm. Which is the reason why we think this is not black sand. Sam Bellamy's pistol was found very close to this concretion. Right next to this mummy. Yes. Yet DNA says this is not Black Sam's mummy. So Black Sam is still out there somewhere. There were 102 bodies that washed ashore out of a 144 pirates on the Widow. We do know that Sam Bellamy was not one of the 102 pirates that washed ashore because he would have been identified by the locals. So this is not the last mummy you're gonna find down there. There's probably another 30 mummies. God knows what's out there to find yet. But if the mummy wasn't Black Sam, then why was his gun found with another pirate? A gun was a pirate's most prized weapon. And it's extremely odd that another pirate would have had Black Sam's gun in his possession. Is this the famous Sam Bellamy's pistol? It is. And this ribbon was wrapped around the handle of that pistol. It's made out of silk, and that's a rose pattern on the ribbon. And that's the image of King William III on the butt of the pistol. We know from primary source documents that Sam Bellamy's girlfriend gave Sam Bellamy a red ribbon with roses on it. This was found next to the mummy? Yes, encapsulated within the Tomb of the Lost Pirate. That's what it's called. These artifacts give snapshots of what happened on the Widda that night. But with so much still underwater, including the possibility of 30 more mummies, there's still a lot to discover. Town records show that two lone survivors, Tom Davis and John Julian, 
made the swim to shore. Then, were captured by officials who took them to Boston to stand trial. Survival from the widow wreck is plausible, and Sam Bellamy's body was never recovered. He may have escaped, but then, why was his pistol found strapped to the mummy? Could he have planted it on someone else to help get away? The ribbon on the pistol was made by his girlfriend, Maria Howard. This is the jail where Sam Bellamy's lover, Maria Howlett, um, was jailed at one point for witchcraft. Wow. Yeah. Pirates, treasure, mummies, and now a witch. The mystery gets more and more intriguing. And if Black Sam survived the wreck, it seems likely that he would have contacted his girlfriend. The oldest wooden jail in America. Yes, and back in the 1700s, this is where they would have kept witches. Is this a ship? This ship, carved right beside Maria's cell, raises questions. Did Maria carve this herself as a beacon of hope that her beloved Sam might return? Or was there something else more sinister going on? Sam Bellamy was a British merchant marine who met Maria and fell instantly in love. Because Bellamy was poor, Maria's parents wouldn't let the couple get married. So Bellamy set sail to make a fortune by any means necessary and became a pirate. Soon after he left, Maria discovered she was pregnant with his child. Fearing what would happen if anyone found out, she kept the baby hidden in a barn. And one day, when Maria was out gathering food, her baby choked on straw and died. The locals believed she murdered her own child, and she was accused of witchcraft and jailed. A witch and a pirate. Maria is the reason this whole thing happened. Yep, according to every story, he wants to make his fortune so that he can come back and marry her. Did Maria die in prison? She escaped three different times. And they didn't bring her back in? No. Where did she end up going then? There are stories that she ended up with the treasure. That's really interesting. That even if he didn't make it off the ship, that anyone who did would have been instructed to bring treasure to Maria. And what did she do after she got out of prison? She just went off to the dunes and um, waited for Bellamy to return. Where exactly was that, was that spot? It was right near where the Widda eventually wrecked in Wellfleet, near Marconi Beach. So she was right there? She likely saw everything. Wow. This would be a likely spot, perhaps, for Mary Hallett's hut. How long did Bellamy leave her for? He was gone for about a year and a half. Is there any records of them planning that when he comes back, they're going to do something? His partner went up to Maine, uh, but Bellamy wanted to come back to the Cape because he was coming back for Maria. And why Maine? Because they would usually go up there to clean the ships. So perhaps Black Sam was on his way to meet his girlfriend and then take her to Maine. So it's unclear why a skilled captain would be coming this way in the first place. Yes. It doesn't sound right. I have a theory. Okay. The wreck happened very close to shore, so close that the divers excavating the widow can swim it. Right. I actually think he had just stolen all of this treasure, and the authorities knew it. If Sam Bellamy actually arranged this, faked his own death, then that's why he would have planted his pistol on another pirate. What if Sam Bellamy survived? There's intriguing first-hand evidence in the 1724 book, The General History of Pirates, which is considered the definitive primary source on the golden age of piracy. That on the day of the wreck, Sam Bellamy traveled north up the coast with three other ships. In the two months prior, he amassed more wealth than any other pirate in history. He was on his way to Maine, where he often went to service his ship. By sunset, there was a dead calm. Before a dense fog rolled in, separating the four ships at about midnight. The 
Canadian cold front collided with a Caribbean heat wave directly over the Cape. A 75 mile per hour wind and waves up to 40 feet tall hurled the widow into a sandbar. This location is two and a half miles away from Machai's Bay. In the area, Bellamy was lost sea. Greening a ship is a process of turning it on its side to clean and repair its hull. To move such a massive ship, the crew had to empty its contents onto the shore, leaving them completely exposed. That's why it was common for pirates to build crude forts and mount their guns during a green. In my experience, a site like a fort always has layers of history hidden underneath it. All what we see left from this fort right here was actually built in the Civil War, correct? Correct. But this location would have had another fort for the Revolutionary War, right? Right. That was built yeah. here before then. Why this spot? Location, location, location. The ocean gives you this little bit of a secluded cove, even though this is fairly large. Mm -hmm. This is definitely going to take away some of that uh, open ocean uh, wave action that you would have. So it gave it seclusion, protection. The wreck, and the, even though they're finding treasure, you still believe that Sam Bellamy's treasure is here? Oh, yeah. It's here. 22 tons of gold and silver. Last place she touched ground was here. He's still looking. He's looking up here. Mike, I got to be careful. But have you looked under this fort? Um, this is a state park. You can't really uh, look at a, a state park as far as uh, digging treasure. Well, I'm not asking about the legality, Chris. Have you looked under this fort? It's a nice day, isn't it? <laughs> OK, well, that's good enough. <laughs> I understand. You don't need to tell me more than that. I started this investigation because I suspected that Black Sam didn't just go down with his ship in a freak storm. Archaeologists often share information with one another. But with millions of dollars of treasure at stake, people here keep their cards close to their chest. Machias Maine definitely played a role in the Sam Bellamy story. And the evidence I uncovered both in Cape Cod and here in Maine has convinced me that Black Sam escaped up here and brought a significant portion of his treasure with him. And I believe if the locals here follow their legends, they will find the missing treasure and the fate of Sam Bellamy.